software and any technology is just a piece of infrastructure. Uh, the real meat of a company is customer facing. Uh, so Ed Berzhoff was a serial entrepreneur and he basically said to me, look out, come on in, work with me, and I'll teach you the ropes. So I ended up being an understudy for him for seven years. So seven years, I'd go with him on sales calls, I'd go with him on uh, uh, marketing and expeditions, and you know, on and on. I would be with him all the time. After about a year, he appointed me vice president. But even as a vice president, with, with P&L responsibility, I still shadowed him a lot. He was definitely my mentor. I don't think any textbook or any courses in any university could have possibly given me the education. What I learned is that uh, software and any technology is just a piece of infrastructure. Uh, the real meat of a company is customer facing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all about markets and developing markets and developing relationships with customers. Um, and I guess I learned the secrets of sales from him. Mm -hmm. At no point did he say, I'm about to teach you a lesson on sales. It was the observation. It was uh, he was um, incredibly good at admitting what he didn't know. Of course, as professors, we know that's a great technique for us. Mm. But as a salesperson, it's a great technique also. Customer asks you, "Can you do so and so?" You say, "No, I really don't know." And it it is disarming, and it, it demonstrates to the to the customer that you really are honest. Of course, it could also be all an act, but it wasn't in this case. In 1996, I got a contact, that's contacted by a guy named Dean Leffingwell in Boulder, Colorado, who said he was working on a design tool and he wanted to compete with Rational Software Corporation. Would I join his team? It was clear he didn't know the difference between requirements and design. So I sat him down with the rest of the founders and said, look, I don't think we want to, commit, we want to compete with Rational. What we want is this new space. Let's try to build some requirements stuff. So I gave them lots of lessons on why it's requirements and not design. I wrote the first requirement spec for a requirements tool. And uh, that ended up being a company called Requisite. And about a year later, Rational Software Corporation bought us because they realized they were not in the requirements space. And then of course IBM bought Rational. That was also a very nice deal for me financially. Um, that was my second entrepreneurial effort. I don't think so. I don't think the fact that the software in either of those companies was anything significant. Mm -hmm. It could have been manufacturing companies, it could have been pen companies. Mm -hmm. It's the insight into customer need and the crafting of your product mix to meet those customers that make, to me, makes entrepreneurship so much fun. Well, I see lots of software companies, I see lots of technology companies in general run by technologists mm -hmm. who have no marketing, no accounting, no finance background, mm -hmm. no operations background, and they become a five-person company forever. Mm -hmm. And they sit there and they sell their product, and they sell their product, they come to conferences like this and they sell their product in the, tool, in the tools room, um, and they never go anywhere because the success of a company is not about how great the product is. Mm -hmm. It's about how great you project yourself to the, to the customers in the marketplace. Uh, hire a marketing person, hire a sales person, hire a finance person. In fact, I'd rather have one of those three people running the company than the technologist. It can be a CIO, CTO, Chief Technology Officer, Chief Information Officer. Yeah. Um, in the company that I'm running right now, our founder knew he was not competent to run a company, so he served as president for about six months and then mm -hmm. desperately looking for someone. He hired me, and he's now our Chief Sales Officer, actually, is what he is. He's our CSO, because mm -hmm. his strength happens to be sales. Every company is a software company, right? Because at least they have an IT department. Um, 
Apple is absolutely fantastic. Apple somehow magically is able to produce groundbreaking product after groundbreaking product. Um, is this secret software? No, it's vision. It's uh, seeing the future and creating the future. Even though I'm not an Apple user, uh, I don't think it's oil. I have no Apple products at all. None. But I know what, I know what they stand for. How great they are. Uh, 3M is a great company. Um, again, is there software? There's software in some of their products, but what makes them a great company is their ability to see the future. Well, Intel is a good example. Intel is able to create an entire new generation of product every nine to 12 months that completely revolutionizes their previous generation of product. What a fantastic situation to be in. Um, so whenever we buy a product that says Intel inside, mm -hmm. we know we have the latest stuff. And um, we know if we buy another one two years from now, it'll be the latest stuff. Latest stuff. Well, I'm running a company right now. There's six of us. Uh, hopefully, there'll be 20 and 30 of us soon. Um, people always ask, are we a software company? And we have software engineers, so we're a software company. But no one sees us as a software company. We produce software. Well, sorry. We produce when a consumer on the web comes to us and tells us their favorite charity, we record that charity, and then whenever the, then they forget all about us as a company. Our company's name is Spiral Fund, so they forget about us completely. And they just shop anywhere they want to on the web. Whenever they're shopping on a site that is affiliated with us as a merchant, they see a little smiley face in the lower right-hand corner to remind them that when they buy something for that for $1,000, for example, that merchant is going to give around $25 to the consumer's favorite charity. So it's a way of giving to charities without spending a penny. So uh, what we do is we make arrangements with merchants and with charities. So when you get on and you buy something, you say your favorite charity is uh, whatever, uh, Red Cross. Mm -hmm. So you love Red Cross, you tell us it's Red Cross, and then whenever you visit any merchant at all that participates, which means they give a referral fee. After you do the transaction, the merchant will give us a referral fee. We'll take most of that referral fee and send it to your charity, which would be Red Cross. Yeah, it's a pure software game, but none of the parties we talk to, the consumer, the merchant, or the charity, think of us as a software company. job for six years, I never understood the financials. But I would nod appropriately. So the CFO would say, you notice that our cash is low here, we're going to have to get our, increase our line of credit. I go, 